So, we were in the Silver Age of comics. And for those who know their comics history, you know that this means the beginning. And I know a lot of you guys are excited about this uh, because you're a big fan of Marvel. Brings about the advent of Marvel Comics. Now, they existed as a publisher before they actually called themselves Marvel Comics. Uh, they were Atlas and Timely. And honestly, I, I confuse which one came first. It, it really doesn't matter as much. Uh, the most notable character they had was, of course, Captain America. But he's been gone. Remember, the superheroes disappeared. And they're making a comeback here. And jumping on board this trend was Marvel Comics. And... Perhaps you've heard of Stan Lee. Those of you guys who are fans of the movies. Uh, he's made a cameo in pretty much every single one up until his passing. And uh, so Marvel Comics got on board because it, essentially, and Stan Lee uh, flat out said in interviews that the publisher, Martin Goodman, his whole business strategy was hey, what's popular right now? Let's do that too. So since what is now DC Comics was having some success with the return of superheroes, like, let's do some superheroes. Here's the thing with Marvel, which made them different from the other superhero comics that came around, uh, is that his characters, his stories, Stan Lee's, and, and I really make, got to make sure I hit on this, uh, Stan Lee isn't the sole person behind this. Uh, he was the writer. He was not the artist. Marvel Comics would not be Marvel Comics without Stan Lee, but it also would not be Marvel Comics that we all uh, know and love now, uh, had it not been for the artist Jack Kirby, especially, uh, but also the artist Steve Ditko, who didn't contribute quite as much, but his contributions were huge. Uh, so Stan Lee was you know, the main guy because he was the editor and he wrote many of these stories. Uh, you know, I, I, almost all of them actually at this point. And uh, what was different about his stories is they incorporated a degree of naturalism or real-life concerns into the stories. And this really hadn't been seen before. Uh, in the uh, Like if you were to read the Justice League of America at the time, the only thing that really separated the various characters from one another uh, was their costumes and their superpowers. And Wonder Woman had one other thing going for her. She was a woman and she would take dictation whenever the Justice League would meet. And if you're going, hey, is that sexist? Yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman should be taking dictation, darn it. Uh, make, give that, make Aquaman do that. Anyway, sorry Aquaman fans. Uh, but anyway, uh, so the, the characters really didn't have much in the way of personality. But with these comics, we really started seeing characters where it wasn't just about their powers... It was also about their personalities, and they all had very distinctive personalities. And the first comic to usher in was Stan Lee, because the guy is a great spokesperson uh, for comics, and especially Marvel comics, and even for himself, uh, what he dubbed the Marvel Age of Comics. And the first one to bring it all in was the Fantastic Four. That was in 1961, and along with Jack Kirby, and again, it would not be what it is without Jack, uh, it featured a group of adventurers with a, a family dynamic. Uh, they would often bicker with one another while not combating evil, and that's half the fun of those Fantastic Four comics. Uh, really, uh, uh, you know, great fun. Uh, they, the two of them, they worked on this series for, I think, well over 100 issues, uh, somebody who knows more about comics uh, might be watching this going, and they know the exact number off the top of their head. Uh, but it was a really long run. And these were really, really popular. Uh, the Human Torch was one of the characters in there. You may recall that the original Human Torch got an honorable mention. Uh, this was kind of like the same thing with Flash and Green Lantern. It was a different character, different name, different origin. But, you know, but they're both the Human Torch. Uh, this one was a uh, kind of a reckless teenager, uh, Johnny Storm. Uh, they have made uh, three now, or actually four if you really want to get technical about it, uh, Fantastic Four movies. They never quite seem to get it right. They keep... Uh, the one thing that is just the cry and shame about it is that they can't seem to get their main villain, Doctor Doom, right. And Doctor Doom, I put him up there with some of Shakespeare's villains... And if you're one of my students, you know that I you know I like the Shakespeare. 
So, uh, and so if I rank Doctor Doom as one of Shakespeare's, uh, you know, up there with Shakespeare's characters, then that means something. Uh, they they never seem to get him right. Uh, thankfully, uh, Marvel Studios, uh, the one that's made all the Avengers movies and you know Captain America, Iron Man, all that, they now once again have control of the Fantastic Four, and uh, event. So we will see another one, and they're in much better hands. And if they're finally going to get a movie right, uh, it's it's going to be with them. Uh, as of right now, I always tell people that the best Fantastic Four movie is The Incredibles. Which sounds like a joke, and it is, but I'm making a point. And the point is that if you take the core concept of this uh, comic, uh, you know, superhero team, it's a family dynamic. There is no way that Brad Bird, who, who created The Incredibles, wasn't inspired by the Fantastic Four. Uh, there's a lot of similar powers going on in that. Again, it's not exactly the same. Uh, there's, there's other levels to The Incredibles. I'm not saying, oh, it's ripping off the Fantastic Four. Uh, but it certainly is inspired by the Fantastic Four. I don't think it would exist had it not been for the Fantastic Four. Uh, just like the Fantastic Four would not exist had it not been for Superman. I mean, it's not the same thing, but, you know, these ideas, they build on each other. Uh, next up, you have the Hulk. Uh, he was another creation by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Uh, Dr. Bruce Banner was exposed to high levels of gamma radiation, transforming him into the monstrous creature known as the Hulk. Uh, that, now, we all know the Hulk now, although the recent movies, they've you know, varied it up a bit, uh, giving Banner a certain amount of control. But the basic concept with the Hulk is he gets angry and he turns into the Hulk. Uh, that wasn't what it was at the beginning. Uh, the Hulk was, uh, he, he would turn into the, you know, Bruce Banner would turn into the Hulk at night. He would sometimes deliberately bombard himself with gamma radiation, so he could, uh, so he could deliberately turn into the Hulk. Uh, there's been some variety, and the picture that I showed you uh, originally, the Hulk was gray in his first appearance. And this is just one of those, you know, funny moments in history where had things been just slightly different, uh, uh, you know, everything would have changed. And instead of, uh, you know, because when we think most people who aren't, you know, comic book nerds, when they think of the Hulk, they think of you know, green, big green guy. And we know him, you know, he's been in the Avengers movies and Thor Ragnarok and all that. Uh, but he, imagine if he was gray. Well, the reason why they changed him from gray to green is because of shoddy 1960s publishing technology. Uh, the first issue, he was, he was gray, but the, the color separators that they had back then uh, didn't reproduce the gray very well. And it would be completely inconsistent. It'd be super dark in some panels, some pages... Uh, really light in other pages, uh, just kind of an off color in other ones. So like, okay, uh, gray's not working. We got to use a color that reproduces better. And so by the second issue, he was green. Now, uh, within the last, well, it's been my lifetime. So the last 30 years or so, they've had the Hulk be gray again because whatever those comics are printed on much better paper than they used to be. Uh, the technology is much better. You can have a cool gray Hulk. And they've had different stories explaining why. Whatever, I, I could you know, probably sit here and talk for an hour about the Hulk comics. And, and, and I, I probably only know half of what there is to know. Because there's a lot of Hulk stuff that I haven't read. Uh, but anyway, so that's why we have a uh, green instead of a gray Hulk. Uh, 